great to be here uh, this morning and talk to you on a topic that is very dear to my heart. It's about higher purpose. And you know, when we look at our world today, which is the only thing that is constant is change. We live in a world that is very competitive, that is very complicated, that is being driven by regulations, that is becoming difficult to navigate in. And the only thing that, you know, if you say change, it's constant, then what is the anchor? Because everybody's looking for an anchor, and your journey is your anchor. And when you look at journey, you have to understand what is that journey you want to have in your life, which you are going to leave in this world. Because when I thought about purpose, and I said that if I did not exist in this world, would the world miss anything? And I think that's the question you need to ask yourself, that if you did not exist in this world, would the world miss anything? And that's when the higher purpose comes in, the reason why we are here, the reason why Mother Teresa found her calling in what she did, the reason why Sachin Tendulkar went on to live his dream, or the reason why Steve Jobs did not settle for what he was doing and was trying to innovate and bring out the best. It is when we ask that question, not the what, not the how, but the why of our lives. And the day you realize what is the why of your life, you would have found your calling. You would have found the purpose for which you are here. Each of us is born in this world for a purpose. Many of us find it very early. Many of us navigate through life. And many of us keep finding it. Many times the elephant is in the room. And you know, somebody says, oh, why don't you go live your passion? And then you say, OK, this guy has found his passion. So what is he talking to me about living my passion? What is my passion? I don't know. I think the point is that your passion lies in the item or in the things which you don't see or which you don't like. There is something you see and you say, I don't want this. That's your passion. That's your calling. You need to go and many times it's that negative, that item which you don't like or the reason why you don't want something to be the passion for which it is there. So I think the point is that we must understand that we need as we go through our life to find this passion very early. And if we find this passion, we would have achieved a lot in our lives. We would have achieved our calling. You know, somebody asked, what's the difference between somebody who gives 10% less and somebody who gives 10% more? That's the difference between a winner and a loser. And we have to decide which side we want to be. We can look at all the obstacles we face, because life is not perfect for nobody. Yesterday, I was at an award ceremony, and there was a lady who was getting an award for all the work that she was done. And she was in a wheelchair. And she has been helping the poor and the, and the disabled. She said, when you see me, I'm a postcard. So you see me as a disabled person. But each of us sitting in this audience is disabled. But you're in an envelope. You cannot see your disability. Because this physical disability of mine does not disable me from becoming disable my determination, my grit, and my ability to go and change the world and make an impact on this world. And I think that's where higher purpose comes in. The higher purpose comes in where you want to leave an impact on this world that when you are not here, the world is going to miss something which you have left behind the impact. And that's what we all need to do, that when we get into a position in life where we are able to make a decision, where we are able to actually look and say what we want to do, we need to find that calling, that purpose, which is going to be very important. There are two things in life which are very unique to a person. One is imagination and the other is purpose, passion. Because once we are able to find, because this is very unique to individuals, they're not different from every single individual, is very different. Knowledge, you know, you take Einstein, what he said, he said passion, he said uh, imagination is much more important than knowledge. Knowledge can be transferred, knowledge can be acquired, but it is passion and imagination that is very unique to an individual. Because imagination makes you go beyond 
the normal makes you go beyond where you are today. And I think we need to look at it from that point of view. You know, when I talk about my own journey, when I look and say as to what I, uh, in, this, uh, in these few years of my professional life, what I've gone and achieved, yes, I'm an alumni, alumni of this college. And then when I go out into the world and say that, what do I want to go and become? And where, do, where did life take me? Let me tell you all my learnings. Every single learning that I got in my life came from my failures. Because that's the time I realized that I was, uh, my true potential came out in those learnings. And you know, when, when we go through, I'll give you a simple example. Uh, we had a situation where we had won a very large client. And the client, uh, you know, we thought this was our biggest contract we won. And within six months of that contract, the client cancelled that contract. It was the biggest disappointment in our firm. The team that was working on it was truly disappointed with this big loss. That something that we had worked for, we had dreamt, we had aspired, has suddenly disappeared from us. And, uh, and I remember we decided that we would go to the client and enforce the contract, which meant that a penalty had to be paid to us. And when I walked into that room, I decided to change tactics. And I told him that we will not enforce the client, not enforce the contract. As I walked out of that meeting, the client said one thing, that you've got a client for life. Even nine years later after that incident, we are still doing huge amount of billing with this client. So many times in life, things that look very negative can become opportunities. It depends how we tackle it and how we deal with it. We have to look at life and see the opportunities that it provides us, the, the, uh, the stepping stones that it gives us, and all those things that you look and feel are going to work to your negative are actually going to work to your positive. And when I was reflecting in our own organization and saying that how do we imbibe the higher purpose into our firm, into the firm in which I work in, and we decided to do it through a series of stories, and when we went and, in, and inspired, you know, what is leadership all about? Leadership all is all about inspiring people, making them believe in things which they do not know that they can do. Leaders truly inspire people. Because if you look at Steve Jobs, he was not a technology person. But somebody will say he's created the greatest technology firm in the world. Because what he did was he hired smart people around him. He hired people who could do things that he could not do. And he went and built a company which even after he has gone, long after he has gone, is still delivering results, is still known as the number one company, is still known as the company that everybody wants to be and possibly the most valued company today in the world. And, uh, and I think the, the issue comes up is that good leaders build institutions that far outlast them. That far outlast them because what they have built is values, they have built uh, uh, the kind of uh, uh, setup which makes others actually go and build and work on it. I think this is very, very important. We should understand, you know, when we, uh, when we start our lives, many of you are still in college, you're getting out to go and finish your college and then get it to work. I think it's important that when you get into a position where you are sitting at a, at a point of time in life, ask yourself a simple question. What is it that legacy I want to leave behind? What is it that I want people to know me by? Once we get an answer to this, I'm sure we'll be able to find our calling. We'll be able to find as to why we do certain things. And, uh, and our whole life is led on these principles. There is one point that I would like to discuss out here is about, everybody would remember the 26th November 2008. But if you don't, I like to jog your memory. That was the time when the terrorists came and attacked India, attacked Mumbai. And there were two, uh, there were many targets which were hit, but the one target which I'm going to talk about is the Taj Hotel. I don't know how many of you remember that incident or remember what happened at that time, but there were some big lessons that came out of that. There was this hotel that was attacked, and they say never in the history of the world 
have so many people come out and become heroes. But the one individual that I want to talk about who actually stood out in that was an individual, the general manager of the hotel called Karambir Singh Kam. When he was at that hotel, the terrorists blew up that, the top part of the Taj Hotel in the room in which his wife and two children were staying. He called up his mother and said, I've lost my wife and two children. She told him, carry on, save as many lives as you can. And even when you read that story, even when that event was over and Ratan Tata came to him and told him, go home. He said, let me clean up and then I'll go home. This is what actually drives people. So what was it that drove him? What was it that drove that telephone operator who came back after being rescued to say that our guests in this hotel and I need to see that they are taken to safety? What is it that made those chefs in that hotel stand as guards, as shields to the guests so that they took the bullets and died for people who they did not know for? What made all that staff stay back and not run away from that hotel when bullets were flying left and right? It was character. It was something beyond. It was that higher purpose that drove them that the guest is most important and they need to be protected. I think it is for us to now, between ourselves, understand what is this purpose we are talking about. And when we are talking of purpose, it's about people. How connected are we to people? It's people, it's pride, it's passion, and it's purpose. Once all these three come, to, all these four come together, the four P's in our life, I think we would have found that we are living in a very connected world, in a very engaged world, and we would be able to take people to a very, very different level from where they are. Thank you very much.